In 2024, I believe anyone can get diamond in 30 days. And by anyone, I mean anyone that's willing to learn. If you're ranked diamond or below and you think you know everything, you might not need a Rocket League coach. What you might need is a therapist. The reason is because diamonds and champs these days are forgetting about the fundamentals of Rocket League. And so in this video, I want to go over seven boring rules that will actually just get you to diamond immediately. The reason I'm so confident this works is because I've got almost 4,000 hours myself and my coaching company, the Grand Champ Bootcamp, has now worked with over 3 3,400 players. It's a lot of force. For access to all of my courses for free or to find teammates that actually want to rank up, join our free Discord. We've got almost 40,000 people inside. <laughs> another four. It's completely free and you can leave whenever you want. Let's get into the video. The first boring concept is radius of coverage. In shooters, radius of coverage or the area that you can cover around you is pretty much a 360 degree perfect circle. As long as you see somebody, whether they're on your left or your right, you can shoot them. However, in Rocket League, it's a little bit different. You see the mistake most new players make is they think the area they can cover in Rocket League is a circle around their car. This is not true true. Because of boost, the area you can cover in Rocket League is actually more like a seashell shape. In practice, what this means is most low-ranked players position too close to the play. For example, let's say you're playing second man, as in you're waiting for the pass on offense. The mistake most low-ranked players make is pushing up way too close to the net because they forget you can actually cover more area in front of you than behind you. This is why if you're at a lower rank, most of the time, I recommend you position further back while you're waiting for the pass. Even playing as far as half field at the low ranks, once again, is completely competitively viable. Do this and you'll be three times as consistent and you'll get tons of free goals. The second boring idea that you need to understand at the low ranks is that your corner is actually the safest place on the field. A lot of low rank players think the corner is dangerous and I get it. The corner's close to your net. So you think that if the ball goes there, it's a problem. In reality, corners are one of the safest places for the ball to be. The reason is because corners eat time. When the ball rolls into the corner, the scoring angles from the attackers are very narrow. And so oftentimes the corner, especially at the low ranks when players don't have super good mechs, it's actually not threatening. The mistake I see so many plats and diamonds make though is because they think the corner is a dangerous place, they try to cut the ball off before it gets in the corner or hit the ball immediately after it bounces. When in reality, if you're on defense and the ball's rolling into your corner, let it roll. Rotate back, get on the opposite side of the ball, and 90% of the time, you'll realize the corner was actually never threatening to begin with. And if there's ever like a stall in the corner, I'm just turning back. So that way the ball's always in front of me when I'm ready to clear it there. This rolls into the third boring tip, and that's you need to commit less. Most low rank players think any ball in the air is threatening, or maybe it's just because any ball in the air is a ball they want to hit they jump. The problem is most of the time, and this is especially true as you get lower and lower in the ranks, most attacks are not scary. The only way you make an attack scary is by committing early before the time is right. And then the ball's behind you. And then yeah, it's, it's kind of scary at that point. Classic example is when you're waiting upfield for a pass, just because the ball is in the air or just because you're at the midfield and the ball's above you doesn't mean you have to jump for it. Most of the time, if you wait back and allow the opponents to be the first one to touch the ball, at the low ranks, keep in mind at the low ranks, you'll realize they don't have the mechanics to make a threatening touch. And so you're better off waiting back. So again, he's just flipping fake challenge, drive challenge. And we get a goal. Plus it's never good to be the last one challenging a ball that's in the air because your recovery time is going to be so slow if you can't win. The fourth boring rule that works incredibly well at the low ranks is stop pushing up to the front post. When we're on defense and we see the ball rolling into our corner, it's natural that we want to drift towards it and take control. The issue is when the ball's rolling into your corner and you're on defense, there's actually no threat. The ball has to come to the midfield before it can be shot. So just because the ball's in your corner doesn't mean you need to push up into the corner to go grab it. Instead, most of the time, it's safer to wait at the midfield. Because the opponents have to take it to you anyways, by waiting back, you can be in a better position and you won't rush your touch in the corner or miss the ball or get into a situation where you pass it to the opponents because you didn't realize nobody was there and you had low vision. Speaking of vision, low rank mistake number five, getting stuck 
under the ball. Low rank players think being under the ball or being close to it is good. When in reality, being under the ball at the low ranks is the worst place to be. The reason is because when you're under the ball with ball cam on, your vision is zero. You can see straight into the sky, but in terms of the actual information on your opponents and your teammates around you, you've got zero. Whenever these situations happen where you have low vision, for example, the ball's over your head, you should immediately, at the low ranks at least, get out. Take this as a cue to rotate off the ball, to go to the left or go to the right and move back. That way you can reset your vision. Remember this, the better vision you have, the more information you have. And the more information you have from players on the field, the better decisions you're going to make. So avoid getting stuck under the ball or in these positions where your vision is compromised because it's going to make you play dumb. And if your vision is good, but you're just feeling overwhelmed with everything in your games and you don't know whether to go for the ball or whether to stay back or just what you should do, chances are you don't need more information. What you need is coaching on what to focus on at your rank. If you can relate, you might be a good fit to get one-on-one -on -one coaching with my team at the Grand Champ Bootcamp. Com. At the GCB, we do paid one-on-one -on -one coaching for 18 plus players ranked at Diamond and above. For example, I was feeling overwhelmed at Grand Champ 1 earlier this year. I was hard stuck for over a year and I just didn't know what to do. That's when I started coaching with the pro coach Shock and he told me what to focus on, which eventually led me to get GC3 just 10 weeks later. Just so you're aware, Shock is actually currently available as a one-on-one -on -one coach for you at the Grand Champ Bootcamp. But as of last week, he's got 28 students actively working with him. So if you want one of the last 12 spots he's got open right now, DM my team Discord account with the keyword diamond for coaching. I'll have my team Discord first link in the description below. That's keyword diamond to see if you qualify for one-on-one -on -one coaching, 18 plus only. And now back to rule number six. Boring rule number six, rotate in circles, not straight lines. The problem most low rank players have is they want to play fast. And playing fast is good, but more often than you might realize, in Rocket League at least, playing fast is not the same thing as playing efficient. It's not the most optimal way to play. For example, your fastest route between you and your net might be a straight line. In fact, it is a straight line. I think there's like Pythagorean theorem or something like that. I don't know. I wasn't in class that day. But just because the fastest route back to your net is down the middle or a straight line doesn't mean you should rotate that way. The reason is because in Rocket League, you're in a car. You can't move left and right immediately. So instead of rotating in straight lines, you almost always want to rotate wide, especially at their low ranks. What I mean by this is if you approach the corner and you're attacking, right? You're moving into the, the corner and you finish your play. Instead of rotating back on the same side you came in, you want to rotate across the field. You are doing what's called rotating ball side. So you're rotating onto the ball side by driving over here. Look at your team's coverage. Yeah. Completely overlapping. So instead of going this way, where are we going? The opposite. Exactly. We're going this way. The reason is rotating across the field and getting behind your team that way. It's going to allow you to pick up boost. It's going to allow you to get better vision of the play. And it's better than rotating straight back through where you came. Another common example. Let's say you're on defense. This one happens with low ranks all the time. Let's say the ball's rolling into your left side corner as we're rotating back on our screen. The ball's on the left. We don't want to rotate into the left, into the corner with the ball, because then we're going to be attacking it on our own net. So there's nobody here. Nobody can hit this ball. You have plenty of time. It's rolling into your zone. So what we do is we just rotate around slowly, take a big wide loop around. We're still going to be first to the ball because rolling towards our side. But because you stay next to the ball, you have like no play on this. Instead, we want to move to the side opposite the ball. We want to rotate off the ball. If you do this, the play will almost always be in front of your car. And it's hard to lose in diamond when the ball's in front of you. On that note, the last thing you need to understand if you want to get to diamond fast, make your touch and rotate out. Lower ranks watching, listen up. The lower rank you are in Rocket League, the less permission you have to stay on the ball for extended periods of time. The reason is because players in the low ranks are impatient. And the longer you stay on the ball, the Hello more there. likely your teammate is to get bored and just ruin the day.
So generally, at the lower ranks, especially when your mechanics aren't great, you want to make your touch and rotate out, obviously. You want to make it stupid simple for your plat 2 or diamond 2 or champ 2 teammate to see what you're doing. By making your touch and rotating out, sure, you'll miss out on opportunities to be super flashy, but on the plus side, you'll rank up. And once you rank up, you can then go be flashy in diamond and champ. The lower rank you are, the more important it is to play patient and to play stupid simple for your teammates. Because let me tell you, your solo queue teammate will not be patient. And if you don't let go of the ball or you're on it too long, they're coming in. Okay, that was my boring seven step formula for how to get diamond in 30 days. But at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, I know what to do. Now the question is, Luke, how do I do this? If that's you, I just made a 2024 updated tier list for every mechanic you need to get through plat, diamond, champ, and all the way through grand champ. Hit the video right on screen here. And once you watch that, you will be set for ranked. Mechanics tier list will be first video on the screen. And as always, thank you so much for watching.